I'm recording. It is 6.02 on uh, uh, July 23rd, 2019. This is the scheduled meeting of ITSC 2309 at uh, Collin College from beautiful downtown. Uh, where are we? Frisco. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's see. We were talking about these uh, various uh, options that we have with casting data. And casting is a important idea. Um, we, some languages, and SQL is one of them, will change data types. And so if you say to use a data type, if you say to, uh, I think the ones that I had were, uh, if you say uh, add a, string to an integer, sometimes, sometimes it will change the string into an integer and do the uh, addition as you're expecting and then sometimes it will throw an error. And it's sometimes difficult kind of to tell when it will do that. So for example, um, let me show one possible let me uh, get a new query. So select um, two, the string two plus three. Okay. Now, what's this going to do? I'm saying the string that has the, the character two plus the integer three. So what will it do? I'm going to make a prediction that I don't know whether it will be true or not. I'm going to say I think it's going to give us back a five is my guess. I'm just guessing here and it did. It gave us back a five. I wasn't sure that was going to happen. Um, gave us back the five because what did it do? It just automatically said, oh, this is, you're a moron. You're trying to add a, a string to a integer. You can't do that. Uh, okay, so what would happen if I changed it around? And I don't know what I'm going to get here. Um, what would happen if I put the uh, two there and I changed it to this one? I put the string on this side and I said, okay, add the two, integer two, plus the string three. I'm going to guess, again, I'm going to just make a guess that it's going to give me back a five, I think, and it does. Now, what would happen if I made them both strings? And I'm going to put a string here, a string, okay. So the character two plus the character three. And I'm going to make a guess that what I'm going to get here is probably going to be two, three is my guess. And I do, I get that two, three, because that, this is the concatenation between two strings. So sometimes it will change them for you. Um, you can't always count on that happening, but that's uh, commonly they will do that. And I'll, sometimes I kind of wish they wouldn't, I wish that they would just be consistent and this should provoke an error. They're not the same thing. Uh, let's see, what if one were a string? What if we tried to, con uh, to make the character selects two plus the character string foo? Okay, what's that going to do? My guess is that this is going to throw an error and it does because it says there's nothing we can do with that. I don't know what to do. So if you make it a string that it can convert, it will. So this is called an implicit conversion. Um, implicit conversions are not good. We prefer that we don't do that. Uh, 
let's do some explicit conversions. An explicit conversion is, okay, I'm going to scratch DB, go, uh, create a table, and the table I'm creating is dates, and I have one field in there, my date, it's not a primary key, so it's a very poor table, very sloppy here, playing fast and loose with it, but that's okay, I can do that. Um, I didn't say if, uh, I guess I should say here, um, if uh, object uh, ID dates This is always a good thing to do whenever you're creating a table because if I tried to create it again, it's not gonna work. Now I can create it multiple times and this will drop it. So when I hit this guy, it will drop it and then it will create it again for me. So boom, and it's just gonna do it. Now, if I try to insert into dates, and this is a, um, this is an explicit cast. So I'm saying take this date that I'm giving you here of 7.23, that's today's date, I believe, and cast it as date time. Um, what will happen? And I guess I should take a look at it, or I can take a look at it by just saying select. and just take a take a peek at what I'm gonna get. Uh, notice I'm going to get, um, 2019, 7, 23, and the time will be zero. In other words, I'm zero seconds into the date. Now, I believe you asked me about this before. Um, that will be less than any other time in the day. Uh, so that we're, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little detail when I say, you know, is it less than, uh, if I, I want everything between such and such a date. So if this date is at 11 o'clock, it's going to be less than, no, it's, excuse me, that's going to be greater than this time of zero. So if I just say 7, 23, 2019, that's going to be zero seconds, zero milliseconds into the day. But the thing I'm trying to get across right now is that if I want to talk about how do you write a date in SQL, well, there is a specific format for writing it, but you know, I never remember it. I never remember what the exact date is. Could it maybe be July, J-U-L, 23, 2019, would that work? And the answer is that I believe it would work just fine because it will figure out what the date is from that because you're doing the cast. Now, if I just said to try to put that, if I said try to insert that into here, um, let's try to insert it. Okay, so let's just go th thus. And values would be boom. Okay, there we go. And what, let's see, that should have been a comma. Okay, so what's it, he's already giving us a, a mark there and I'm saying, wait a minute, uh, that's nothing that we can deal with. Um, let's see, I need to get rid of this. Okay, uh, so now I've got my parentheses in the right place. So open parentheses there, close parentheses there. 
the cast has it. This one's going to work just fine, but this one isn't going to work. It's going to say, I'm not sure what that is. Let's see how he works. And um, why isn't that working? Values. Uh, few, I wasn't expecting that uh, error. Let's see. I think I maybe need a semicolon there. I was looking for a different error. Yeah, incorrect syntax. So it's saying that it doesn't like this. That's not the right syntax for a, uh, a date. But if you say cast it as date time, then it will go in and figure out what it's supposed to be. So if you, you can practically say it any way you want to say it, as long as you cast it, select cast, how will I say it, J-U, uh, what if I just, what, what if I said um, 23 J-U-L-Y 2019? Would that work? And the answer is, well, yes, it would. Um, it'll put it in there just fine because it's it can figure out what that is. Um, what if you said instead of that, let's get wild. And we instead of 2019, we just said 19. Would that work? And my guess is that it probably will. And it did. It put it in there just fine. Uh, now, the little, the, the caveat here is you have to be careful when you're talking about um, two-digit dates. Get, the, get this copied. Copy. Paste. Uh, let's see. What if I talked about 79? Now, what's that going to be interpreted as? I believe that will be interpreted as 1979. And it was 1979 here. And the, the rule is that if it is after 50, it um, is interpreted as the last century. Uh, I'm not sure what would happen. What would happen if we said five zero? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what would happen. What will it do? What will it say? Will it say it is 1970, uh, 1950, excuse me, uh, 1950 or 2050? Any guesses? I don't know. And it says 1950, but if I say, um, 49, I think it will say 2049, I believe. That is my guess. And look, it says 2049. So the cutoff is between 49 and 50. If you want to talk, if you want to insert a two digit date, it will never misread it. Uh, it will always be, if it inserts it as 2049, it will always be 2049. If it inserts it as 1950, it will always read it as 1950, no matter what uh, time it is. The time will be just this one. If we insert it as a date, uh, so if we just change it to um, straight, straight date, then this one will not have a time. So the time will default to midnight, um, to the earliest time possible on um, 7.23, okay? So by the way, if we were talking about less than that time, we would already be, we would not qualify for less than or equal to that time because we have already passed it. And that's kind of the thought uh, you were asking, Tracy, about some uh, a question about that. And I was thinking about how to deal with that question properly. And so the question is, uh, consider a real number that, you know, like 
uh, the numbers less than 10, but where the, you know, we, we're considering the decimal points too. So if we consider 9.3, is that less than 10? Absolutely, it is. 9.7, yes, of course, 9.99999 is less than 10. Well, what about 10.0? That's less than 10. But what about 10.00001? Is that less than 10? And that's a little bit like what we're looking at here. It's uh, those uh, numbers are, when, when you start talking about dates and times, you're talking about real numbers that have decimal points. And if it's, uh, uh, if it's the um, uh, July, uh, July 23rd, point, meaning the point is the time, point zero, 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 all zeros, then that would be equal. But if it's even one millisecond into that, then it would be less than that, or excuse me, the time would be greater than, um, than the uh, July 27th, July 23rd, uh, 2019. So uh, that's what it was talking about when you're putting in a literal, and these guys are literals. So if I put in a literal like this, and as a date time, remember the time defaults to zero. So if I say where it's less than or equal to the literal date, if it's one minute into that date, it's going to be less than. Am I making any sense at all, Tracy? Oh no, I'm I'm a, I'm fully good with what that means. I was thinking further along as how do we handle it? So something like an application. So I'm really kind of probably mm -hmm. thinking about things I shouldn't be thinking about yet, which is like. Um, it's okay. Uh, we're gonna, we're we're going to talk about applications, uh, not too far down the road. But so, I mean, I'm thinking about things like a date of service on a medical treatment. Right. If it's a doctor's office, it's just the date. Right. And but the if doctor's it, office is going to grab the date off of their server. So they're going to grab the date and the time that it is right now, right this second. So it's going to be 233.0 seconds into the day. And, but so then, and, and I guess that's, I'm just wondering how um, they must have to manipulate it a little bit when it comes, or maybe it's just a matter of pulling the output from, if you're using a database and you're an insurance company, uh -huh. then that's where, you know what I mean? Like the insurance company is just going to report that date, but I guess they are, they probably just take the data and truncate it. You know well, what I mean? They, they, they can. They can. They can. It, does it matter uh, if you are insuring something? You're insuring that this event, okay? Uh, you're insuring that uh, uh, if this event happens, then you're going to pay them lots of money. Um, that event happens. Does it matter what time of day that event happened? Well, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking about is things that where it has to be, you know, like you take um, census at 11.59 and, you know, it's supposed to be 11.59 and 59 seconds. Right. Right before midnight. And, and just a matter of making sure that when you manipulate data like that, you don't accidentally lose something because yeah, exactly. it just has my mind rolling through potential issues. And oh, exactly. Uh, really. I mean, I buy insurance that says, um, you know, if I'm, I buy a life insurance policy that says if I, if I get whacked on this uh, flight, um, it pays my, my heirs lots of money. Does it matter what time I bought that policy and what time the flight crashed? It matters. Big time. Uh, some things are some things you can do to the day, but uh, uh, many things matter to the to the second, and that's what it was talking about. And the times, if you just put in a time, if you just put in a date, 
uh, for example, this one, if we just put in the date, uh, and I say, I'm going to put in 7-23-2019, right? What do I get in there? I get 7-23 and zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, zero milliseconds, right? Now, I could put in 7-23... Um, 10 minutes, let's see, I think it's a... That'd be 10 oh, hours. Yeah, 10 hours. Okay, zero minutes. But that's kind of what I realized after we talked was that the idea that we're going to mess with databases to just use a day is not likely. We're going, our, we're, our data is going to have to be as you are typing it. That data is um, going to have to have the minutes, the hours the second probably it will have them it will have them if i put in um yeah let's see how do you do it select if i say right now get date uh okay so what time is it right now and I can insert this into the database right this second when it when I pushed enter right there. It is uh, uh, July twenty third at six twenty three and seventeen six six o'clock twenty three minutes seventeen seconds eight hundred seventy milliseconds. If I were to execute it again, I'm going to get a different number. That's why these things make very good primary keys, by the way. Um, and so if I just do get date, I'm going to get that. But do you really care? Do you really care what the milliseconds and my, you're going to have them. They're part of the date. And so what that's saying is that if you just go in and ask for everything that is less than or equal to, if I say less than or equal to uh, July 23rd, this number will not qualify because this number is greater than July 23rd, 2019. Are you with me? It is greater than by what? 18 hours and 23 minutes and 42 seconds and 143 milliseconds. So if I'm looking for, is it greater than, less than, this is less than. Um, so if I, if I were comparing that to this literal value, this one right here, I'm going to, and I say everything that is uh, less than or equal to that, this number would not qualify as being less than or equal to this. Now, what that means, I don't know. What does that mean to you? Uh, is it important to you to catch that? Uh, date. So do you want less than or equal to, or are you going to say less than or equal to that plus one day? You get my drift. Oh, I do. Well, and that's what, and that's what you can't really do plus one day, because if well, you're you talking can. like a hospital sentence, census, then that stroke of midnight is too far into it. So oh, yeah. I, I realize we just have to stop thinking about dates as single days and think mm -hmm. of them as the database has them with the, the minute you know the hours the minutes all oh, we have sure. to think of that level of detail and and that's what i was struggling with but mm -hmm. now i'm cool with it yeah i've worked with hospital censuses and uh you know they go down to the second and when that patient walked out the door or maybe the patient ripped their tubes out and walked out the door. You know, you have to, sometimes you, you don't know exactly when that happened. Um, so you just have to get your best guess and, and go with that. Uh, and they'll usually take that. But uh, when the patient is released is a uh, point in time that is uh, down to the second, certainly down to the, certainly down to the minute. 
or maybe down to the second. So what happens if they walk out the door and fall? You know, who has the liability? You know, were they your patient when they fell? May they not. Anyway. Um, moving on a little bit here. Okay, cast. Casting is an important deal. Casting is if I cast a uh, decimal as an integer, it truncates it. It doesn't truncate the value. The value is still 14.85, but the result of it, it, the result of this function is 14. Um, cast it as a float. It isn't truncated. Um, cast five as float. We call this a promotion because I give it a decimal point. Um, this is handy to use when you are adding integers plus floating point. As much as we hate floating points, sometimes we have to use them. So whenever we're going to add an integer plus a floating point, it will usually cast it for you, but we like to do it ourselves anyway. I can cast a number as a string. If I cast a number as a string, the result is the number, the character one, five, decimal point six, a string of four characters. That is not a number, although sometimes it will cast it back. Uh, varchar, varchar four. Um, I don't know why I put this one in here. Casting it as date time, the result is a date and a time, and the time is zero. Okay, now I'm going to talk about one more thing. Um, well, I should talk about convert. I'm going to talk about try convert. Um, Try convert is something that is not provided in all SQL, but it is provided in most of them now. They're starting to all see the light and say, hey, we need something else. Let me see if I can um, put it out here. Or, no, uh, try, try cast, try cast, try convert. What am I talking about here? Um, Try, uh, I have try convert. I should have said try cast. I need to change that. That's a, that's a typo. Um, I'm not going to change it right now. Try cast. It's try cast, not try convert. Let me go back to, to this one. Um, cast two, 29, 2019, that's date time. Not a problem. That's uh, that's pretty. That's today, right? I mean, well, no, not quite today. That's uh, in, in a few days. It'll be it'll be okay. But there's there's nothing wrong with that date. Um, if I say try cast, everything will be fine. So if I say try cast, can we cast this? 7 23 2019 as date time not a problem now what if i try oh this this one this one has a problem yes what about 2 29 2019 what is 2 29 2 is what february february what 29th well on what years do we have a february 29th we have february 29th on leap year is 2019 a leap year? No, Dr. Smith, 2019 is not a leap year because it's not divisible by four. So what if I tried to cast this, I'm gonna say cast it as a leap year. When I execute this, I'm going to get a big red error message in there. Everything's gonna to come to a stop because it didn't work. That's an invalid date. I could have said the 32nd of May and it would have done the same thing. Um, okay, 
So I'm going to do try cast. Now, what happens if I try cast a number that is 723? Now, this is a perfectly good date. If I try cast that, everything's peachy keen. It works just fine. What happens if I try cast 229? This is the invalid date. I try cast it as opposed to cast. So I say try cast, what do I get? I just get null. Instead of an error message, I get null. Now, this is going to become a big deal for you in your next class when we're programming because what happens if we throw an error in the middle of our program? Everything turns into a pumpkin. Our whole world just comes to a screeching halt. So if I'm bubbling along here and I say, okay, everything's fine and I'm gonna do this stuff, and so I'm gonna execute these three things, will I ever get to this line nine? I say execute. Um, Okay, well, uh, I meant to put this one in there. I'm gonna try these guys, okay. So let's see if I ever get to line 13. So I'm gonna hit an error on line 11. When I say execute, boom, I do like this, and now I, I'm not sure what's going on. Did I ever get to this one? Uh, actually, I did, but if I were to say execute this, um, I would not have gotten to it. I would have erred out right here. Um, and I never would have gotten to that other one. So it's kind of like um, when you're, when you're uh, creating tables. And so you, you say, okay, create table doctors or something like that. And I say, before you say create table doctors, you should say, you know, if object ID doctors is not null, drop table doctors, because if the uh, doctors already exist, it's gonna throw an error, and, you're, and nothing for after that is gonna happen. So it's, uh, you have to uh, be able to stop that from that from happening. So if we do try cast, and I can say uh, this, right here, so I could say something like this, um, if, select try cast, if, Let's see if this works. It's giving me lots of, uh, is it gonna let me do that? Maybe it has to go in parentheses, I don't know. Okay, so now I can, I don't think it's gonna work. Um, let's give it a try, I'll run it and see. And if I think I have to put it into a variable uh, and we don't know how to do that yet. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, we do have variables in this language and we can have a, I can create a variable, give it a name uh, and put things in that variable, and we're going to learn how to do that uh, very quickly into the very first couple of days of the next class. Uh, but I can ask, you know, did that happen? Is that null? Instead of just, um, let's see. So if I try this, as soon as I execute this, He's gonna die right away. But if I execute a try cast, what he's gonna do is he's just gonna return null and it makes a big difference. So try cast is something that is um, 
uh, catching on big time with it. The other one that uh, I wanted to talk about here in this one is the convert. And I believe I have that one somewhere here. Um, so that convert. Uh, convert is another one that is not a um, normal, um, it is not part of SQL. It is uh, something that is provided to you by SQL Server. And let's uh, take a peek at it here. I'm going to pull it over and paste him. Let's see. I think I have him. Okay. Um, invoice date. Okay. Um, This is commonly, oh, well, I goofed that one up, didn't I? Um, invoice date is um, select convert varchar invoice date. Um, I wonder how I got invoice date in there. Uh, that's not quite right. I can't really just say something like that. Um, select convert invoice date as my date from invoices should work because I have to have a, um, and I think I have to have a use um, AP underscore DB in, in there. And so I say convert invoice date to 107. When I execute this, I'm going to get the invoice dates. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is that I get a, I can provide it with a formatting number. So a convert is not quite the same thing as a cast. This one is provided by um, SQL Server, and 107 means to show it to you like this, March 1, 2019. That's how it shows it to you. Um, and if you change that date, let's say if we change it to 105, what would happen? I'm assuming that there is one. 105 changes it radically. And you have to go and read about what the various um, formatting numbers are that are given to you for that. And where do you find these? They're in your textbook, by the way. Do, 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 do. Um, try convert. I should have put where they are in there. I'm going to look that up and get those in there because I need to have the convert. Notice that the convert is different from the cast because we say cast. Now cast is SQL. So this is SQL. Cast something as something assumably different, doesn't have to be different, but it doesn't make any sense if they're the same thing. So cast this as a date and cast works. Now convert works a little bit backwards. You see the date time is over here. So convert to varchar comma invoice date. And then this is a um, formatting number. And I will get that, um, get those page numbers. Convert is not as important 
as cast because convert is unique to SQL Server. And I guess that's why I didn't get that in there. Now, try convert is becoming a um, uh, try convert and cast and try, excuse me, try cast. Cast and try cast are pretty much the same syntax, except that cast throws an error if it can't do it, and try cast just gives you null if it can't do it. So try cast is becoming uh, much more popular among programmers because it doesn't error out, it just gives you null. Questions? Just using the index of our book, yeah. it is page 254 through 255 on the convert function. Okay. And there's an example way back on 98 and 99, but it doesn't explain it. It's just another example of convert function. Right. I'm going through this uh, right now, and I'm um, getting all of these little typo things that I um, aren't there that should be there, getting them caught up and um, done. So uh, I will get, what What did you say that was? Um, let me, I can go ahead and put that in there right now. Functions, where's that? Try convert. So convert is, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go back. Yeah, convert I wanted to. 254 and 255. Okay. Uh, convert, edit. Cast, oh, and then there's try, convert. Try convert. So this would be what, page uh, 254? Mm -hmm. Through 256. Seven, if you want to include try convert because it's 254 okay. for mm -hmm. convert. I'll just put this in there as a note to, um, to myself. I'll get that um, written in there uh, because I, I really should point you to a page on that where those uh, where these numbers are you know 106 and 105 and all those numbers um, have meaning and they change how it handles it but it, it actually it it um, converts your date to a varchar now this is very very handy when you are sitting over in a web page someplace and if you try to print a date from the database, you're going to get a really weird integer. Uh, what you want to do is convert it to a varchar so that you can handle it in your in your uh, web page. And very handy for that. Uh, I'll get those um, pages up to date. Questions? Save. Okay. And the quiz. Uh, exercises, I'm gonna get the exercise. Exercises are pretty easy. Um, asking you to do a cast a try convert um, cast to a float and um, cast to varchar. So it's it's pretty it's it's pretty easy. It's an important um, exercise, but the um, you shouldn't have any trouble with these exercises. And uh, I think I give you the solutions, what they. I don't remember whether I put these out there or not. I might have. Okay. Um, So 
So that's data types. The next ones that we have are going to be the functions. Now let's see, it's 646. I'm not going to get very far into these. The functions are basically, um, they allow us to do things with the uh, uh, materials that we have in our database. So we can manipulate strings, we can manipulate data, and we can manipulate dates and times. So I can give you the difference between two dates, or I can add two dates, or work with two dates. I think the first ones that we're going to look at are manipulating strings, and um, they are pretty interesting. I think I'll just quickly get started with these. And so some of the problems that commonly occur when we're working with strings, if I store numeric data as strings, they sort incorrectly. For example, the character string that is 7-7 seven, seven is greater than the character string 695. Why? Because 7-7 seven, seven would come before 695 in the uh, uh, dictionary or in the phone book, whatever. Now, if you were to store that with a leading zero, you would fix it. Um, and then there are issues when two values are stored in the same string. Uh, if you have two values stored in the same string, you have violated one of the fundamental rules of database. And that says that a, uh, a field only has one value. So there cannot be a first name and a last name in the same field. If the field has a first name, space, last name, that is the value of the field. There is no such thing as a first name, last name in the same field. That said, ha ha ha, there is quite frequently that gets, that happens. And sometimes we just have to deal with it and sometimes we have to uh, work around it. So we were doing that with the uh, phone number. So in the phone number, what did we have? We had the area code and the prefix and then the, the four digit phone number. And if we really cared about the area code, and I ask you to show me, you know, find the area code where, find the, all the, the, uh, the vendors where the area code was who lives in California and the area code was, I don't know, 512, whatever. Uh, they lived in California. Well, that's a field, but the area code is not a field. The area code is stored inside of another field. So that was a violation of the idea that a field contains one and only one value. It has to be taken as a whole thing. It cannot be split up, but <laughs> it is all the time, folks. <laughs> it just is. And if it weren't, we wouldn't have all of these string functions that let us manipulate strings. Um, so functions that return information. So there are two broad categories of string functions um, and we call them observer functions. Those things that give us back information, functions that return a new different string than the argument. And those are called constructor functions. Let's look at the observers first. And what can I find out from observers? I can find the length of a string. If you ask me, um, is there, a, okay, my first name is Steven, S-T-E-V-E-N. It does, is there a V in my name? Because if my name were S-T-E-P-H-E-N, it would not have a V in it. Returns an integer that represents the position of the first occurrence of the find string within the search string. So if I said char index V, Stephen, um, and then I can start at, at some other position than, than uh, one, and it would tell me uh, where it was found in my name. For example, if I said select char index of V, 
let's go lowercase v, in Stephen. Okay, where is V? There's one, two, three, four. I expect this to return a four. Um, select chart. Okay, what did I do wrong? Um, uh, as This should work. Okay, four. I guess I just didn't highlight it. Oh, I'm up here. Something's wrong up there. Um, so it says it's four. Now, what would happen if I if I spelled my name different? S T E P H E N. Now I'm not going to find the V. So when I try to select the char index of it, it's going to return a zero, indicating it was not found. Um, that's a, a handy one. The other one, the one that I skipped over first, is uh, let's copy, paste. Let's look at the length. The length of that. How many letters are in it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven letters in that string. And so when I return this, I expect to see seven letters. Um, some interesting things. What would happen if I didn't have any letters in my last name, in my name? If it were just a empty string, this is going to return. Okay, come on. Zero. There are zero letters in that string. Now that's a perfectly good string, so I can check to see that the LEN of a field is greater than zero if I want to make sure that you enter at least one letter into that field. Um, we're about out of time today. Um, so the LEN length, where is it in there? So returns the, the, of the first occurrence of the fine string. It is not necessarily one letter. The fine string can be a, a, a series of letters. Um, for example, if I wanted to find the first occurrence of FEE -E in the string, um, uh, the, the first occurrence of the string FUM in the search string fee fi fo fum, then it would appear farther on down the line. If it does not find it, it returns zero. The uh, pattern index is like the char index, but it allows wildcard characters, and we're going to talk more about that. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and end here because we're about out of uh, out of our time tonight. Are there questions? No, thank you. Hmm. Others? Okay, I'm gonna wrap up for the night. Um, well, let's see, what? Uh, where are we going from here? We have, um, let's see, 23rd, 25th. I need to check. What exactly is our final? I think I'm logged in here, actually. Um, I don't want to be logged in, Colin. 
just want to go to the Colin homepage, resources, uh, academic calendars. Um, uh, I think it's 2018, 2019, summer 2019. And um, so August 12th, August 12th through the 13th is our, um, is when we will have our final exam. Um, so we need to get our test two in. By the way, I have finished grading test one. I have posted the results, well, all except for one of them, where one person didn't have their name included in it correctly, so I uh, didn't get it posted just before class, but I will post it. So even if you didn't get your name in there correctly, don't worry about it, I'll get it, I'll get it uh, in. So all of those are in and, and uh, recorded. Um, Let's see, so August 12th through the 13th. So that gives us, what do we have then? We have the 23rd, the 25th, one, two, three, four, five. We have five more class meetings. Um, now, I, what I typically do on the final, and don't write to the dean over this, but if you are happy with your grade, I do not make you take the final. Meaning that if you have everything turned in and you're done well on the first two tests, you don't have to worry about the final. Did you hear me? Anybody still here? Yeah, that's very generous. Well, it's it's you know it means I don't have to grade them. <laughs> um, it says that if you know if you've done uh, if you're happy with your grade on the first two tests, then you'll probably be, because the final is typically a way that you can uh, in, improve your grade. So if you've already got an A, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap it up here tonight and I'm gonna go eat. Thank you. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. I guess. Ganesha, are you still here? Yes. Uh huh. Any questions? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, I'm about to end it here. Sometime when you're not less hungry, can I? I'd like to. I may send you an email asking you about prereqs for the next class. Okay. Uh, I'm not really, really hungry. I just uh, um, let me. I'm going to turn off the recorder. <laughs> Okay, let me turn off the recorder here. Uh, stop recording.